Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Wednesday puzzle and I am on what is quite possibly the slowest and least reliable hotel internet I have ever encountered for today and tomorrow. So I might try and make this a relatively quick video to reduce the size of the total upload. I'm <laughs> slightly concerned I'm not going to be able to get it uploaded to YouTube while I'm here, so we'll, we'll have to see. You might be seeing this uh, farther into the future, farther into my future than is, than is usual, but we'll have to see. This um, uncertain edition of the Daily Solve uh, has been brought to us by... Who has it been brought to us by? <laughs> Sorry, the internet is so slow I can't load my, my names. Uh, today, by Bradley Pirtle, Trash Snack, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the inimitable Connor O'Neill, and the infallible Cynthia Toms. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Soul Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and making it a sustainable part of my daily work. And thank you to everybody who has uh, pledged to the Patreon campaign at any level. For a few pounds or the equivalent in your local currency, you can receive all of the bonus videos that go up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week, like the weekly mini speed solve and the New York Times cryptic crossword that went up a few days ago. So do enjoy that if you're a patron. Um, also subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's done so and pushed pushed us over 9,000 subscribers the other day. That was also very nice to see. And what else? I, I might just get right onto it. <laughs> uh, this is a crossword constructed by Addison Snell, a debut construction for the New York Times by Addison Snell, and it was edited as always, by Will Shorts. As a Wednesday puzzle, it will be themed and maybe slightly big, slightly more difficult than, than yesterday's and the day before. Those were, I think, pretty smooth, so probably will be a little tougher. Feature on the right side of the Apple logo. That would be a bite taken out of the Apple. And Blank Sandoval, two-time two all-star third baseman. I don't know, but let's check the downs here. A bit of sweat could be a bead of sweat. If you're just waiting around, you're idle. And one side of a Twilight fan debate. Oh, interesting. So, is it vampires versus, what's the other one in those? Werewolves, I think? Team vampire? Team werewolf? No. Well, it might be team something, though. What about this starter home, Eden? The Garden of Eden, starter, starter home in the book of Genesis. Ah, me, alas. To follow is to ensue, events follow, events ensue, and to make an objection, you could say is to demur, to sort of quietly make an, ex an objection, I suppose. Uh, who am I? And zodiac animal between fish and bull. Demur seems kind of weird. Oh, but maybe it's right. Fish and bull. Um, is it a ram? I just don't usually think of Demir as to make an objection. I think. I mean, I suppose it is tacitly making an objection. It's almost making an, object an objection by abstention. Anyway. Primary place to park would be the main lot, maybe? Main car lot? Perseverance's organization. is Oh, NASA. That's the name of a... NASA spacecraft of some sort. And Scandinavian liquor whose name means water of life. Aquavit looks looks like what it means, <laughs> pretty much. Okay, there's the third baseman. Like all the sides in a regular polygon. Well, it definitionally, it being a regular polygon means the sides are of equal length. And a cribbage scorekeeper. I don't know, I don't think I've ever played cribbage. Feature of some city streets. Um, a grid, some kind of square thing. I'm not sure offhand, but oh, bus lane maybe. There we go. And a French explorer of the Great Lakes. Hmm. I'm not sure if I know this. We'll have to see. We'll have to see once it becomes filled in with crosses. Classic beer of the Pacific Northwest, familiarly. Uh. Classic beer. I don't know. Maybe I'll know this when it when it fills in, but I'm not sure. To dress up is to gussy up, get gussied up, get togged up. Cribbage scorekeeper. So, oh, a peg. There must be a, 
board with a peg. That sort of seems right. Oh, Pablo Sandoval, maybe? I mean, that sounds like a name. <laughs> uh, Oli, classic beer of the Pacific Northwest familiarly. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe I won't fill this in just yet. Salmon blank plancha, fish dish. A la salmon a la plancha. I mean, that looks, that looks pretty reasonable. And, oops, who am I? Now, this kind of looks like Jean Valjean, who is a character from Les Miserables, and one of the only sort of names I know from that production, a book, film, musical, etc. What does that mean? Oh, is that the name? Maybe he sings a song? Called Who Am I? I have no idea. I've never, like I say, I've not seen it, but I do know the name. So that must be. This must be the name of his song he sings, or something, something like that. That's my guess. So this is pre presumably thematic. In fact, it certainly is because the theme has been italicized. And generally, when you see an italicized theme, that means it's, well, ital italicized clue. I'm sorry. That means it's part of a theme. It's only done that way sometimes. It's usually done that way when there isn't a bigger revealer that will um, point to these answers itself. Okay, so George in Germany. Jock? Ranch animal is a steer, no. What is this? George in Germany. Boy, why don't I instantly recognize that? That's, that's very frustrating. Train set, maybe? A toy train set? Oh, this is about as... Full as, full as it's going to be, isn't it? Um, La Salle looks like French Explorer. That looks fine. And Oli, I guess? Oh, why, maybe? I don't think I know what this is. That's, that's not encouraging. I'll have to remember that I'm not certain about that part of the grid. Okay, extract from ore as metal. Smelt, smelt the ore. You extract the you extract the what the sort of whatever it is you're producing. Okay, who nominated Sotomayor and Kagan to the Supreme Court? Those were Obama's Supreme Court nominations. And white or red trees? Oaks, red oak, white oak sounds right. Healthful cereal component. Bran is very common breakfast cereal element. Prefix with cultural, agricultural, I guess. And a peevish state is a snit. You're in a bit of a snit, a bit of a peevish state. And an automotive pioneer, Benz, Carl Benz, yes. Uh, partial namesake of Mercedes Benz. And most of Patagonia is in it, Argentina. There we go. Uh, the region of Patagonia. And a Scottish cap, it comes up in the crossword, not infrequently, Tam for Tamishanter comes up sometimes in cryptic crosswords as well, actually, as a component of wordplay, usually not as an answer unto itself. Kerfuffles could be a do, so that was a whole ker kerfuffle, a whole a do. No more than three, or, you know, no, no more than merely three, no more than, I was no more than a man, you might say, I was a mere man. Ferris wheel, e.g., is a ride at a carnival. And C37 across, and 37 across says, with 39 across, I am what I am. Um, I'm not sure what I should be looking for there exactly. Is it a name of a character? I mean, the Popeye says that, right? I am, I am. Although he says, I am what I am, and it's very sort of intentionally written with a Y. So this might be another song from... Les Miserables or something else? I, I have no idea. Uh, what about this? Main ingredient in a Sazerac would be rye whiskey. Oh, is it Gloria Gaynor? The singer? Just wondering based on the Y-N-O-R here. Ah, Jorg. Jorg. Jorg, I suppose. George in Germany. George in Germany. And capital of Ghana is Accra. So here we have to stop something is to cease it. There we go. Okay, group for women who drive. Oh, it must be drive in a golf sense, though. The LPGA, the Ladies Professional Golf Association, and big airport 
sorry, Big Apple Airport code is LGA for LaGuardia International Airport. Impudence is gall, the absolute, the absolute gall of asking me about a sort of <laughs> uh, two-time all-star third baseman crossing with a classic beer of the Pacific Northwest familiarly. No idea what to do with it. Result of an entente. Uh, it could be a pact, maybe in a in a conflict situation. You could t two belligerent entities could could uh, have an entente and then form a pact and come to some kind of peace. This looks like Team Jacob must be one of the characters from Twilight, and then Hogwarts headmaster Dumbledore, Albert Dumbledore, Al Albie maybe is a name. Blank TV, Impractical Jokers era. Oh, sorry, error, not era. My mistake. This, I'm, I'm doing this on a very tiny screen when I do this remotely. And I have to really squint. I have to remember to look at this clue, where it is actually slightly bigger, and I don't need to move my eyes as much, but I never do that. I always look over to the right. Anyway, uh, name of brothers in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Is the Isley Brothers. So here we have another proper noun cross. Um... True TV? I think I've heard of that. Albus Dumbledore sort of sounds like it could be right. And True TV, Impractical Jokers, Error. Didn't that come up on... Wasn't this part of a crossword recently as well? Word with poison or pig? Pen. Uh, poison pen or a pig pen. Uh, poison pen being someone who sort of writes a nasty letter. Special gear for medical workers. Um, I don't know. Why don't I immediately see what that is? What about this? Double curve is an S. Of course, it's you can see, see it in the letter. Locale for zip code 10001 in brief. New York City has those really low zip codes. Uh, postal codes in the U.S. Not really sing, say, to lip sync. You're lip syncing. You're not really singing. And, oh, oh, special gear for medical workers is PPE, something we do all know now. Um, protective, uh, personal protective equipment, is it, I think? And I think, therefore, I am. That's René Descartes, philosopher. So what is this exactly? What is going on here? I'm not sure I understand. Oh, these are all sort of quotes or names of songs that refer to oneself. So who am I? I am what I am. I think, therefore, I am. I see. So this is a sort of cultural... It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a body of cultural knowledge tied together into a theme, as opposed to one specific work or subject or something. It's a bro broadly conceptual uh, theme referring to self-identification or self-questioning. I am what I am, and here, here, here indeed is Popeye, as, as slightly expected before. And I am that I am. Now that I'm not sure. To deny is to naysay, maybe? Hmm, not sure enough about that to put it in. Intense convulsion is what? A throw, as in your death throws. Intense convulsion. Family name on TV's Dallas. Ah, I've never seen Dallas, but I was... Um, that was sort of a little before my time, before I was of the sort of age to be watching that kind of show. What... Uh, I've seen it, but I just don't remember. Okay, 1965 March settings, uh, Selma, uh, Civil Rights March is what that is referring to. And to get under the skin of somebody is to rile them. You dropped a bomb on me, I guess, 1982 hit by the Gap Band. I don't know if I know it, maybe I would if I heard it. Oh, Ewing, the Ewings, family name, name on TV's Dallas. Yes, the Ewings, I, I do remember learning that. Zounds is egad, and follow is as in orders, is to heed orders. Oh, I am that I am Yahweh. This must be something from, what, the Torah, maybe? And then to deny is, after all, naysay. Okay, great. So we're coming along. This has been a bit of a tricky puzzle for Wednesday, but we're getting there. Contribute, contribute, contribute to a brainstorm session is to ideate, to come up with ideas. And Queen, Queen Anne's lace is a plant. Right? Isn't that a plant? I think so. Love of soccer. Love of so Oh, maybe it's not. Because I kind of... Something in the recesses of my brain is 
remembering a soccer player, an American soccer player maybe, named Mia Love. Is that right? I think that's I think that might be right. So what is this? Queen What is this? I'll have to look elsewhere. A bit of pageant wear could be a tiara, a little sort of crown thing. And QB John in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um Opposite of yep, na. Do I spell it with an H or a W? Uh, stretch of time is an era. Okay, this does look like Queen Anne's lace. I think I was wrong about Mia. What is this? Love of soccer. Oh, nil. Is it? Oh, I see. Because love in love in um, in tennis, for instance, is, is a score of zero, and in in soccer, I guess you'd say nil. Okay, and then here we have John Elway, who is another another athlete of whom I've actually heard. And then opposite of yep is na with a W. All right, it's all happening. Pub order is what, a pole? Is it pull a pint? Or it's not really an order. You wouldn't say give me a pole. <laughs> okay, wedding declarations. I do's or vows maybe? Although I fits better with that P. Event held in a ring. A rodeo. All right, so it is I do's. Resinous adhesive is epoxy, I suppose. A very strong adhesive. And places to brood are nests. Deli counter call could be next. And Woody and Buzz Lightyear for two are toys from the Toy Story films. And then a pub order is a pint. Okay, so I even said pint. That was strange. That <laughs> I didn't then think. That's the other word that starts with P in the thing I just said that's much more appropriate. And there it is. All right, so I didn't need to, fortunately didn't need to return to, didn't need to return to the, the northern end of the grid to deal with Pablo and Ollie or Ol Y. I wonder if I know this. I wonder if I know this beer by its full name. I, it's not ringing a bell. Strange. That is a tough, I have to say, that is a tough cross, especially if you aren't, if you don't, if you don't have sufficient familiarity with, with the U.S., those don't seem like universal bits of knowledge to me. I'm sure Pablo Sandoval is extremely well known if you know anything about baseball. But if you don't, that's tough. And this seems very obscure. But maybe it's not. I don't know. I, I, I don't know it offhand. Anyway, so let's, let's look at our theme. Let's see. We had Who Am I, presumably sung by the character Jean Valjean. We had uh, I Am What I Am. Must be. It must have been sung by Gloria Gaynor, uh, most famous for "I Will Survive." We had, I think, therefore I am a famous declaration by a uh, famous sort of logical inference by Rene Descartes. We had "I am what I am," Popeye's catchphrase, and we had "I am that I am," Yahweh, which is clearly a religious uh, quotation. And then, was that it? Was there anything going? in the downs. I don't think there was. No, there wasn't. So that was that. We had a very interesting theme from Addison Snell, and I kind of like it in the sense that it is, it's very thematic. It really is. There's, there's a theme of the self and knowledge of the self and questioning of the self running through the crossword. So there's a theme in both the literal crossword sense, but also in I don't know, almost the sort of literary or philosophical sense. You don't see that quite as often in uh, these themes. Not that there's any need for that to be an element of the theme, but it's sort of fun that it was this time, I think. Uh, definitely a trickier puzzle, though, than the last couple of days, that's for sure. And some difficult some difficult um, proper nouns. And I suppose, by the very nature of the theme, all of the theme answers were proper nouns. So they, there was some degree of reliance on general cultural knowledge here with all these different um, fictional characters and historical figures and entertainers. So yeah, interesting. Let me know how you fared. This is probably going to have an extremely wide spread in terms of how people consider the difficulty to be tuned on this one. That is, that is my suspicion. Let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. I just realized I don't have those as quickly to hand as I should. It's going to be a slow process on this very slow internet. I don't really get cell service here either, so 
uh, between all of that. I don't have many options. Anyway, I'm just, just getting this loaded up here, sorry. All right, here we go. Now, the, the, the first thing I want to say, this is, I am in no way surprised this is the case. Uh, GTDP says, Lindsay Hoyle's sirloin story, which I repeated yesterday, I have to say, I sort of decided to be a bit credulous about it. I am always extremely skeptical of any sort of etymological mythology that seems too tidy or clever or funny because it is almost always wrong. This was the this was the bit. So I, I had said yesterday I went I went to this um, live interview with Sir Lindsay Hoyle, who's the current uh, Speaker of the House of Commons in the UK Parliament, and he told this story about um, he told this story about uh, sirloin getting its name from a from a king, and I looked it up, and the, supposedly in his telling, the king was King James the the first or the, the first of England and sixth of Scotland who came to Chorley, or, or near Chorley, which is where Lindsay Hoyle's parliamentary constituency is, and said, James knighted this beef loin because it was so tender and succulent and whatever, and it, it became sort of like, not, not true at all. And uh, GTDP, and, and those kinds of stories basically never are. So anyway, GTDP says, it's actually from the old French surlonge, or above loin. Surlonge, surlonge? He could very well be telling the story straight-faced, but assuming that everybody implicitly knows it's a legend, and since he can't be political, it seems like the story is a bit of lighthearted patter he can bring out in public when necessary. Uh, I would link the Snopes article, but then the comment gets read as spam. Yeah, fair enough. The context of the story, I think, was was during the International Speakers Conference, which is when um, speakers of the houses of various legislatures from throughout the world will all be hosted by one of them and in this case he was he was talking about hosting nancy pelosi and the speaker from germany and italy and all these all these various places and so he was sort of regaling them all with local lore and then someone else someone else commented on this as well but uh oh, i can't find it because i was not prepared for this oh here it was it was uh, john mayhew who said this uh, this is an astonishingly astonishingly persistent example of uh Etymology, so portmanteau of etymology and mythology, to use a descriptive portmanteau for the variety of folk etymology involving a plausible but specious story to account for a puzzling word or phrase. Sadly, few such colorful stories are true. And then John explains the same uh, true derivation as GTDP. And I, I, I looked this up myself as well, and the actual word sirloin in English predates the reigns of any of the kings were variously supposed to have done the knighting. So there we go. Certainly not correct. James Dickey clarifies, uh, confirms that grok, the term grok to understand, comes from Robert Heinlein's Stranger in a Strange Land. That was my first thought. And then I thought, wait, was it was it someone else? I don't even remember who, what my other guess was. Oh, Aldous Huxley was my other guess, but no, it was Robert Heinlein. Old Fooder points out that the circadian rhythm letters in yesterday's puzzle were arranged in a sort of sine wave, so themselves depicting a regular cycle. I'm sure that was intentional. It was a very nice, it was a, it was a clever little detail. And a few people, such as Joseph George Blaze, pointed out that circadian rhythm, in fact, also has 15 letters, of course, along with sleep-wake cycles in 24 hours. I think I may have, in a very in a strange mental lapse, suggested it had more letters than those other theme clues. I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> it's obviously not the case. Anyway, uh, let's see. Bradley confirms that I should never guess about anything when it comes to sports because he's... Bradley says that you are indeed incorrect in all three of your attempts to guess what MSU stands for. The Spartans, which was the, the clue for that, that answer, are from Michigan State University. And I, I guessed several other things and they were all wrong. Uh, as Bradley points out, I originally guessed USC, which is the Trojans. So that must have been the source of my confusion. I must have remembered some kind of, of Greek, Greek connection. And Life is Boss gives me the benefit of the doubt there, saying, USC are the Trojans, but since both they and the Spartans of Michigan State University mascots are just styled Greek helmets, I 100% get the confusion. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not sure if that was the confusion, but well, that was, that was the confusion for me with USC. I definitely didn't know the MSU school. So. Okay. Uh, let's see. There, I'm... 
Oh, and 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 the, sorry, there, there, I'm I'm going to cut it off after this just because I, I I do want to get onto the edit of the video and start uploading it hopefully soon. But let's see, who is this? Uh, Miha Kojeo says someone already got to. Oh no, never mind. The, but the one I wanted to read was. Oh, I'll point out that technically, based on the chronology of the biblical narrative, Cain and Abel, the story of Cain and Abel, came after the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, just for what it's worth. But yes, the expression raising Cain does indeed refer to the story. And yes, that is that is true. And that's one of those pieces of knowledge that I know. But then in the moment when I'm on the crossword, I, I, often, I often will just sort of blurt things out because <laughs> I'm in the middle of a sentence. And I think what happened was I was going to refer to the story as being from Genesis. And then for some reason, I just went... My brain just took a strange detour, and instead of referring to the book of Genesis, I referred to the Garden of Eden, which, of course, it is the case that Adam and Eve had already been uh, expelled from the Garden at that point. And actually, it led, that observation led to my looking up, where did Cain and Abel start? Because Cain ends up eventually in the land of Nod, but where were they originally when the events of the murder of Abel take place? And that doesn't seem to be, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be stated. It's just not not mentioned in the Bible as far as I can tell. Although there are other, it looks like the, the, the Islamic account of Cain and Abel is slightly different, and there are various apocryphal um, uh, Judaic texts, the Ju Jewish texts about the Cain and Abel stories that are, that are sort of different, so any, anyway. But I couldn't find any, any canonical explanation as to where they, where they were. Uh, not that it would make and any particular difference to this point. Anyway, that's that for today's crossword, and that's that for today's video. I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully, if if if, inter if the internet allows, with the Thursday puzzle, which will have presumably something of a bit more of an intricate or involved or complex theme. We'll have to see. Do come back and join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.